I never uh, really ever thought that I would ever be become an, uh, a sculptural um, artist at all until I was always a painter, uh, always uh, doing two-dimensional work. And um, not until I took some courses, I guess, in um, post-secondary uh, post post uh, education that, uh, that I decided, uh, you know, I was really getting into, you know, the three-dimensional design. And that's when I uh, sort of started uh, practicing um, I guess smaller versions of uh, ideas that might, um, I guess, someday, you know, become, you know, potential designs for sculpture. And um, there was a call to artists to, to design and uh, uh, a public sculpture, come up with some kind of concept that something that uh, that uh, I guess will relate to education for um, for the First Nations University, which is just a sculpture that was done just a block away from here. So uh, at that time, I was working in, in uh, Alberta. I was working at a high school teaching art. So. Um, I drew up the concept and I submitted, uh, you know, the intent, the letters and uh, CV and whatever they needed uh, to, uh, for the committee. And I sent that away and um, I was uh, told about, <clears throat> I, I, I received a letter <clears throat> and an email about uh, four weeks later that I was shortlisted. I guess one of the four artists shortlisted to to come uh, to to go to the second phase, which was uh, to do to uh, design a maquette, which is a smaller version of uh, the intended uh, uh, design. So they, I guess, we were given at least a month to to prepare this, and uh, and I I didn't think that that was enough time so I just be basically started on a, on the project uh, as soon as I could and uh, I worked on the project right till the last uh, day before it was it, it could be transported to uh, Regina my maquette was at least four feet by four feet so, and it wasn't, weren't able to put it on a courier because it would have smashed up or got damaged somehow. So we, uh, me and my friend George, uh, took the long trip to uh, Regina from uh, Lethbridge. And uh, the deadline was uh, that day at uh, 4.30 p.m. And I believe uh, George and I got to Regina <laughs> <laughs> about uh, 15 minutes after four o'clock <laughs> and we were scrambling around trying to find out where Riddell Center was and the fine art department and we were really panicking saying oh we're not gonna make it we're not gonna make it after a eight hour drive we're not gonna make it geez and um, finally got a hold of somebody at the art department and uh, they said, yeah, you just go to the back door. You can drive through to the back and you're gonna load up your, your maquette. And I said, okay, I'll meet you there. So, all right, good. So I guess they're gonna take it. <laughs> so, you know, all about art eh? and doing small designs like this. And uh, it's all about deadlines. And sometimes you have to go right to the last minute <laughs> to be able to head in your, your designs, uh, which is, you know, the, the life of an artist or a sculptor. So in, in about, it must have been about three weeks after, um, I received a call uh, that uh, was uh, to notify me that I was uh, successful and that I was, uh, my, that my design was the one chosen to be uh, erected at, uh, per, uh, at the University of Regina campus. Um, so um, 
<laughs> it was uh, quite the shock because that was my first major sculptural uh, uh, public sculpture that uh, I was going to be doing and so there was uh, some kind of uh, so we were invited to some kind of you know opening and uh, to open the, the design up and uh, there was uh, you know there was, uh, there was speeches and by dignitaries and it was a, and from the university and it was a really big thing and uh, we never went through this before in our lives <laughs> it was it was quite a shock but so um, in the process of um, doing the sculpture um, I was fortunate enough that um, the the Univer uh, First Nations University of Canada um, because I was doing the sculpture here in Regina, asked me if uh, if it was uh, if, you know if it was all possible that uh, I could teach uh, some sessional courses. And of course, I you know I, w I, I was here, might as well, right, and do a, a, a night course or two. <laughs> so uh, and uh, and they, they were sort of having. Um, I guess a uh, sh shortage of uh, teachers at that time, and, uh, which was an opportunity for me uh, to, to, you know, open up doorways and other doorways as well. Uh, and so I began teaching more courses uh, the following semester, and uh, and so I started teaching here ever since 2005. So I've been here for uh, 16 years now. <laughs> So, you know, uh, because of a, an open call to do a sculpture, it, it just kind of, you know, perpetuated to something else and then that perpetuated to something else, which is a, a career, uh, which, is, uh, which is amazing, you know. When I got out of high school, I never knew, uh, after I graduated, I didn't know what I was, wanted to do. I was just so lost and I was thinking maybe uh, joining uh, the RCMP uh, Academy to, you know, uh, to get some kind of job, start out and uh, get me, I guess, uh, uh, in, in some kind of career. And uh, at that time, a friend of mine named Jerry Mock uh, approached me at school and he says, you, um, I went uh, up requested some application forms from uh, Alberta College of Art and Design and for some reason they uh, they sent me two. I was wondering if you wanted uh, to, to send one in because we were in the art class together and he said I said well I don't know I never thought of myself as an artist. I said oh what the hell. I did the test I think it was an application form with um, 10 drawing tests Ten pages of drawing tests, and uh, I sent that away. And, uh, and uh, about uh, two months later, I got a letter in the mail saying that I was accepted at the Alberta College of Art and Design. And I said, "Well, I guess I'm going to be an artist." <laughs> so these, you know, these little incidents that you look back on, that sort of your destiny. You know what you go through in life is is what you end up doing, and uh, by who your contacts are and what you go through in life. Yeah, and that was basically. Uh, and then uh, after that sculpture, it's sort of uh, the four directions. It's called, which is just down the road here uh, in the, on campus. It sort of uh, got me on the the interest of always looking up uh, um, on the internet for possibilities of, you know, call to artists and uh, and that became my practice was just going online and researching and finding out who needs uh, to, you know, get designs done and if there's any call to artists and uh, and that's basically what I do is uh, as an artist. When I was uh, growing up on the reserve, uh, there was all of uh, there was 
it was always drawing, you know, people were always drawing, um, mostly pencil drawings, you know, because uh, it's basically all we had, I guess, at that time. And in school as well, too, there was a lot of uh, artists, like, sort of trying to draw things. And, and when I got to high school, it was more serious, like, we got to take um, art courses in grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12. And that sort of gave me a little, a little sort of interest in, in art, but never thought I'd be an artist. Uh, I do teach classes at the First Nations University of Canada, and uh, I teach uh, traditional Indian art, I teach uh, sculpture, I teach two-dimensional design, and uh, at times I teach uh, Indian art history. Uh, so, besides uh, my my art, uh, you know, practice uh, in class uh, with students, uh, I do go home and then you know pursue my own career as a as an artist. And uh, when it, when there's a call to artists to 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 design a certain kind of um, concept you need to I guess um, a lot of times they will uh, they will uh, basically give you some something to fall on like what is uh, for example the the sculpture in uh, Saskatoon to do with indigenous uh, missing uh, and murdered indigenous women so you know certain points come come about to get you motivated um, so and then in doing that and l trying to find a concept you end up um, doing a lot of research either going through the internet or going to the library you, you seem to find a lot of um, ideas that uh, visually and uh, also reading um, about, uh, for example, reading about families who missed, who had a missing uh, a daughter, or they sort of give you uh, sort of some ideas. For example, the, the 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 sculpture in Saskatoon, a missing and murdered uh, Aboriginal. It was about a mother who um, was describing her daughter. I'm not sure uh, uh, if she was found, but she, the daughter went missing, and she described her daughter as uh, a dancer, and described her daughter as uh, uh, that she used to um, really be really light on her feet when she danced, and she was. Uh, she, when she danced, she flew like an eagle. And, uh, and it sort of gave me that idea that um, turning the, the, the shawl that the, the dancer is wearing into um, um, wings and flying as she dances. So the piece I'm doing now, this is a, a maquette. It's, it's a smaller version of the actu actual size that I'm, I'm intending to do. So this right now is uh, about a three foot span, but uh, in the wings. But uh, the one that the original, the, the main one that I'm going to be doing, it will probably be a span of uh, six feet. Uh, the wings will be six feet span. And uh, once the, the larger one is done in clay, it will be sent to the uh, Pafard foundry where it will be cast into bronze. And uh, uh, the bronze process is, is, is pretty tedious and very long probably take around six months to do. Uh, the eagle itself in bronze, what they would do is take this wing and they would uh, 
uh, make a, um, uh, I guess, a, just brush a, a rubber, a rubber mold on, on the outside. It'll be all uh, about four coats of rubber mold, yeah. and that's the form that they're gonna use as their um, uh, to, to do the to do the casting. And then once uh, the the form is made, then they'll use um, then they'll make a uh, wax um, mold out of of the form. Then the wax is then. Uh, there will be a wax form of the wing, and then once uh, once they have the wax form of the wing, they put a, a porcelain uh, sort of mixture uh, onto that. Uh, they rub uh, the porcelain uh, about four coats of porcelain onto the outside of the wing, and which will be about you know one inch thick once they're done. And uh, once that's all completed, they put it in a furnace where the wax will melt out. And then that's what they'll use. They'll use the porcelain as the cavity where the hot molten uh, uh, bronze will be poured into. Uh, basically, this whole the whole eagle will probably most likely cut in in uh, different parts. Uh, the eagles will the, the the wings will be cut. Each of the wings will be cast separately. Uh, the, uh, the the tail will probably cut right around here, where it will be cast separately itself, and then the body will also be cast separately. Uh, once these parts are all cast in, br uh, in bronze, uh, they will uh, then be welded back together. And then once they're welded back together um, to the way it's supposed to look, it will be um, sandblasted to make it nice and smooth. And then uh, they will um, put a patina on that and burn some patina right onto the metal. Mm -hmm.